Um, we are hosting these gatherings because there's a lot of stress in this world today. And our job is working with people to work together and collaborate. And so we are trying to provide a forum where we all get better. We all get our attitudes lifted. We all have an opportunity to share some of the resourceful, creative things we're doing as we get changing info all day, every day, and bless the state of Minnesota for having a two o'clock conference call today with the governor to put the state on shutdown, which isn't dramatically different from where we are already in Minnesota, but it is, um, it's just progressing. New York did it, California did it, so now we're here. So as an effort to both stay real, problem solve, inspire, give hope, that's what we're doing today. So um, think about the stuff that you might be challenged with um, that might be um, something worth taking away because again, what I'm looking for on these calls is that everybody leaves with something that they can say, gosh, I'm gonna go do that or I'm going to um, walk away with an action to take that makes me or my company or my team or my family better and instills some hope and action that goes forward because it's gonna pass. We just don't know when. So I want to share this quote that was in my time hop. And if you haven't uh, done time hop, it's one of my favorite little indulgences in the day because it pulls pictures you've taken on all kinds of formats. And it shows you two years ago, 10 years ago, seven years ago on that day. And it's kind of amazing when you see all the things certain days are really good news and certain days seem to bring a lot of change. But this one is from four years ago, today, and it says, our greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another, and that's from William James. I thought that was appropriate for today. So to all of you, if you would, um, what I would love to hear is something that has been effective, uplifting, good, inspiring this week that's happened for you, for your company, for your family. Please share mm -hmm. it because we want to start with good news and we'll get into stuff. Who wants to start? I can start if you'd like, unless somebody Please. else. Please, go. Okay, awesome. So I Say have... your name when you start, Jessica. Oh, my name is Jessica. And I have the great fortune of working directly with Sue on a daily basis. And I, that is part of my inspiration is I um, am lucky enough to see all this stuff before any of the rest of you do. And Sue just recently did a three video series about what we can do for our business. And then she focused on herself and self care and then her home and her family and has it very well organized on whiteboards. And I have to say, um, the organization of that and the attitude of what can you do, the serenity prayer keeps running through my head constantly, you know, taking, asking for serenity for those things we can't change, trying to be aware of the things that we can and being courageous and taking action on those and the wisdom to know the difference. And then hearing Sue's videos on really being um, proactive on the things that we can do has been something that I look forward to spending a little bit more mental time with to set myself up to be more effective in the upcoming days and weeks ahead. So thank you, Sue, for this privilege and honor. My pleasure. And I'll get Thanks those out for... to you, I promise. We're working on it. <laughs> She's hoarding them. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you. I love working with you. So it's a gift. Mutual gift gives both ways. Who else? One thing Seriously. that's Celestine. Um, one thing that's been working drop something. I'm back. Uh, that was the fastest recovery I've made all day. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> um, I am grateful for the coaching and grounding practices that I've learned over the last 13 years. I would be a solid perpetual mess if it weren't for those. Um, so I kept saying, well, I get to do the dishes. I get to do, I teach yoga for 
all the folks that I've never met before. And she's exceptional. Um, Maybe we can get her to do a move with us before we get off this little gathering. <clears throat> virtual yeah. workouts work. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. we can. I'll have to be really descriptive with anything like lower than right. yeah. rib cage. <laughs> um, yeah, so the yoga poses and saying I get to and noticing when I'm really fearful and then going breathe and making state, state of being changes and noticing that physical movement is really good because then I don't have to try to be positive. I've literally shifted and I can feel it. So it's not a, a brain trying, it's a moves the body and then the rest comes into mm -hmm. alignment and it's effective and I've been doing it like 18 times every day and it works. <laughs> so. Fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah. Thank you. And if you'd mute when you're not talking, we'll remind you that would help a ton. Who's going next, please. Thank you. Brent, are you off? How about you? Hey, <clears throat> well, it's funny you say yoga. I started up yoga about uh, a year ago, less than a year ago. And I just got done with a hour yoga session before this for my Good line. for you. So that has been a really good release. And I think the other thing I can tell you I noticed has been huge increase and in that's just time on the phone with family and friends. You know, that's kind of a good grounded thing to do. Hopefully we'll look back at this as a great time where we built those relationships up. Amen. Amen. Got us back to center on that. Nancy Geenan just joined us. Please share your camera and your um, voice. We're just sharing. Hi, friend. <laughs> Hi. What city are you in? Are you in? I'm in Scottsdale. Okay. Well, bring it in Arizona. Thank you, Brent. We are sharing good, inspiring, something great that's happened this week, just to sort of set a context, and then we're diving into stuff. So, if you're ready, jump in. Otherwise, anybody else who hasn't gone, jump in, please. Uh, well, we decided that the next three weeks were a great time to get and train a puppy. And so I, I hardly ever get three full weeks where I can be home and uh, get a puppy train right away. And one of the girls have been thinking about getting one. So that's our new excitement and uh, gives us great joy and diverts us regularly because her needs are there and immediate and, you know, she's not watching the news. <laughs> exactly. And you must share a picture because she is a bundle of fluff. Uh, yes, I'll do that at some point. At some point. No pressure. All right. Thanks, Nancy. Christine D. The only thing I could, that's been helpful for me is, I think, to get back in touch with family, but it's also been to deal with some role reversal. Let's hear a little bit about that, Dee. <laughs> well, suddenly, as a change, I felt this week like I got parented rather than doing the parenting. And that's a role that is new and different, and I'm trying to accept <laughs> learning to accept <laughs> so you're not loving it right away it's not um, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well it's no i'm not <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being honest that's what we do here <laughs> but but it it has opened my eyes to some things mm -hmm. it's made me aware of some things that i do mm -hmm. um i tend to call myself a mother hen I got mother hand this week, and sometimes the feathers come up the nose that aren't <laughs> quite as comfortable. <laughs> but that's been, that's been a, it's been good. It's uh -huh. just been different. You know, kids have a wonderful way of re making you stay humble, don't they? It just doesn't end. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> For those who are not in on the joke, Jessica, who is up above in the wonderful pixel waving at you, that is Dee's daughter. Yeah. Jessica and I work together. And so I have gotten part of the story, but it's fun to hear the other half of the story <laughs> as she gets on talking about parenting because you know that word vulnerable for so many people right now, being vulnerable 
whether immunocompromised or in a particular category or an age category, is a very real thing. And that's something to talk about because everybody's got a different tolerance about what that means and what I've had to learn. Are. I've had to learn to accept the fact that I am now classified older. I'm that well, older yeah. segment of society and I'm not used to that and I'm, I'm adjusting. <laughs> well, fair. And I'll give you perspective. I'm going to tell a brief story and then we want to hear from you, Christine, as well. Um, when my son was young, I mean, like, probably he was under 10. Um, he acquired a stepsister who at the time was, I want to say 18 or 19. I cannot remember. It was right on that cusp. And he said, I don't want to be with the old people. And I thought he meant us. And he said, no, Megan. And she was <laughs> nine years older than he was. So it's all relative. Yeah. Who's calling you older? <laughs> Just offering. Thanks. All right, Christine, I see a baby and that gives me great joy and peace. Yes. yes. How she old? Is a little <laughs> she's eight months today. Hi. So, yeah, she's. Can you wave? She knows how to wave. Everybody wave. <laughs> it's a baby. We can all look ridiculous. Hi. She's going, I'd rather chew on this. You got teeth coming. Oh, um, you know, it's, I, we've been going out and getting some walks. So fresh air has helped even in, you know, the sun's shining. We went over lunch. That, that's really helped exercise. I think just getting out of the house and, and just walking has been nice. We have an, a five-year-old too. So it's been good to take breaks because my husband and I are both working and I can't have my mom over because she has, she's been battling bronchitis a little bit. Oh so my. yeah, so we don't want to risk anything. She'd normally be our helper, but that's okay. We are making it work as best we can and trying to see the positives and where we can, but kids definitely help because they keep your mind off of the news. You just kind of <laughs> got to do your daily thing and keep going. That's right. And, yeah. you know, thank you for that because there's so much going on. I talked with one of my best friends this morning, just randomly, you know, checking into Brent's point. I've had so many phone calls with so many friends, colleagues, you know, family. I have had to charge my supercharged charged battery on my phone, which I've never had to do because I'm using it so much. Um, but one of the things I'm thankful for is, you know, her daughter came home from New York a week ago or so. Um, she's a college student and working on an advanced degree there and opted to leave the apartment there and being hip and cool to come home and hang with her mom. Well, dad and uncle are busy in a motor home driving around Arizona and taking pictures. They're photographers. So mom's alone. And guess what? Today she started having cold symptoms and she thinks it's a cold and I just said well I hope so but when you've got respiratory stuff coming up right now it's just kind of scary because we don't know what it is and we've got to be safe so um, my daughter was just texting me right before we got on here saying my boss who travels nonstop came back and she has it and it's positive and so we're all staying away from everyone so far displaying nothing but you know, it's, it's happening closer to home now. So we've got to be mindful. And for some of you running businesses, working with teams, working on your own, how do you sort through and not hit the overwhelm button or the overreact button? And how do you keep yourself sane during this? So these are great things you've shared for me. You can see me on my treadmill desk. I've had this thing for 15 years. And so far today, I've got five miles in, which is lovely. Um, yesterday it was rainy and junk junky outside today in Minnesota or yesterday in Minnesota. And it's just, it's a good option for me while I'm needing to do this. So thanks for letting me bounce up and down a little bit. So my, my question to you guys today, cause this is what we've been saying all week. What's, what's in your way? What's something you could get help with, whether at work, at home, with family, for you personally, What's something you'd love to toss out for conversation to get perspective? Because we have people from across the U.S. on here. It's not just uh, 
one location and we have different age groups and we've got different circumstances. So please toss something out that would be worth asking to a group beyond your circle and let's see if we can't help each other. And then I'm happy to toss in the stuff that I've been on webinars all week from one with 240 plus people on it to six to eight to 10 um, nonstop. So I feel like I'm getting a good pulse on what people are doing, but it changes all the time. So anybody have an immediate pressing need or a question? The thing that I can think about is um, with yoga, it, so the people that I meet vacillate between, oh, I really need to work with you and then I'm going to have to meet in person and yeah, no, I'm going to cancel my appointment um, and so on with all of the classes. So I went from mm -hmm. a super full schedule to a schedule in mm -hmm. a few hours. So some people really need it and they really want it. And they're like, yes, so valuable. And then other people are like, no, I'm staying away from you. Um, so that's challenging to deal with. And I wish that I had a specific question. I've been trying to pull a specific question. And um, I, I just, I don't know what to do about that. Okay. So, smart people online, what thoughts do you have? I know what mine are. I've heard of a lot of people in your industry, um, specifically with the yoga and even meditation, taking their courses online. So do it providing calls just like this where you're demonstrating the moves or even going through like sitting yoga or just yoga poses. You could even create videos that you then put online for people to reaccess later. But I think this is where <clears throat> taking as much as like we're taking what we offer through yes and bringing as much of it virtually as possible. And to, I think for me personally, I would love to attend a yoga class online where there is such a craving for community and for opportunities to move my body at the same time. Even mm -hmm. if it was a 10 minute, seven to 10 minute break, like Sue's been talking a lot about when we do these virtual sessions, every hour, we're at the top of the hour, we're taking five to seven minute breaks. And so even if it's sporadic throughout the day to gain momentum and say, hey, I can do private or group courses online, that gives you something you can still charge for, or maybe it's a group membership. So sign up for everything that you're doing virtually for a month for a flat fee or something like that, but being creative and how can you get your services online? And Celestine, if I can dovetail onto what Jess just said, the trainer that I use locally, they've started doing free little like five minute videos that are on their Facebook. They do a new one every day so that everybody could have that thing for that top of the hour for nothing. But if you like it, they have reduced their fee to a monthly charge. And they're like, we'll customize a thing for you if you want one-on-one. -on -one. You can do one to five workouts per week, different priced packages where it's like, I will be right here on a Zoom call. You're full front and center. They are, you can see, you can correct their positioning. They've mm -hmm. found it to work. It's not the same. And they may not have equipment, but you can work around that. And especially with yoga, you need a mat, you know? So I would tell you, don't let it slow you down. Just say it's going to look a little different till we can be face to face, but let's make it work so you don't have to wait. Yeah. Yeah. I did make my first um, YouTube video the other day and posted it and a local gym picked it up and posted it on their page. So it was a, a 10 minute one. It was really um, you can see it on my Facebook page, Sue. I think I'm not friends with anybody else, not excluding you. I just, but they can be now. Yeah, you can if you want. Um, it's a short 10 minute one. I think it's very accessible for anybody with legs that move. You know what? Um, send it to us. We will send it out and we'll post it to our yes page and where we're doing our stuff in our unfuckwithable group. Okay. And again, 
what I'd encourage you to do is have a call to action at the end of the video. Just say, you like this, I've got more. If you're just stopping with, here's one move, awesome, free, generous, all that, but then you've got to say, how many of you need this every day? I can make you seven customized ones, you know, for X. We can yeah. do, you know, five minute ones, 10 times a day, or you can have some for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, or you can have personalized one-on-one -on -one live with me. I have this many spots open. Mm -hmm. So a very specific call to action. Cause right now I just have a local gym cause I'm wanting to support them, their website and my website. I don't have, it's not more Tell me what you can sell me, that. baby. Otherwise, I got to work too hard. <laughs> okay. And specific, the other thing is, measurable. again, anything you can do to help people is something rather than the big zero on your calendar. So that's where it's like you also will get emotionally great. And the thing I would tell you about doing this is fast and imperfect beats slow and perfect all day, every day right now. See Nancy Geenan's face up there? So this isn't a time to worry about, oh, I'm not a professionally edited, you know, could be exercise yoga person, could be webinar deliverer. It's get it out there so that people can say, wow, I can't tell you the number of people from the WPO meetings that I've been running who asked me for my PowerPoint deck. And I was like, okay, you know, there's nothing special, but it gives them a template to follow because nobody has a script. Yeah. So don't yeah. underestimate what you offer. Go ahead, Nance. Yeah, go fast. And, and the other thing is just be direct. You don't need a cutesy little hook or anything like that. It's like, you know what? We always start with help first. I think Sue and I, it's hard having both of us on the call at the same time because we say the same thing so often. Um, but just get out there. And, you know, and when you put out the Facebook keep sharing, ask more people to share and just have a, you know, cause you're going to, not only do you need to do something now, but you look at it to how you can build your pipeline for when we get to whatever the new norm is. I mean, you may become the next, um, you know, global yoga instructor because you just do it in a way that connects with people. The big thing with cameras and remote is to really focus on those things that connect and people that's what they need right now they need to just be seen and and be heard and i think giving that in a in the meditation and and yoga spiritual space um because every day is new the only constant is change and uh, yeah. it, it challenges everyone and and everybody's feeling what you're feeling so it's it's also having that vulnerability piece to say hey you know help what, what can I, how can I help you? Cause here's, here's, here's the gift I have to give. If you were born to do this, you'll connect. It's your unique, unique skill. Don't, don't, don't worry about anything else except getting yourself out there and connecting with as many people as you can. Thank you. Awesome. Who else? Brent, how's your business? What's happening there? What could we dive in and help you with? You know, um, it's interesting because we serve a convenience store market for those of you who don't know. And so we do loyalty and reward programs. So we actually sort of feel fortunate because our customers are very busy and very much a key element of the community that people need to be able to go out and get things and uh, gas and the necessities. So the good news is our, business, our clients are, are busy doing well and we're able to help them with some of the tools. So. That part of it is very good. I feel fortunate. In fact, we've uh, surprisingly have had quite a few people who are really interested. We're giving some incentives, but we have some people that may be signing up with us even the next week just because of everything going on. So, so there is good. some hope out there. I think people are starting, my feeling is people are starting to adjust a little bit. It's a long ways to go, but as people get more comfortable, mm -hmm. they know the world can't stop. You know, they've got to, move forward and they know there will be an end at some point. So that's my feeling. Well, I am thrilled for you that there's a, every business owner I talk to who's got some hope and has some good news is inspiring to the rest of us. So thank you. I'm, I'm on yeah. your team. Let's make it happen. 
Yeah, I think the big thing, um, you know, it's, it's, I think the employees and how you deal with the remote and, uh, you know, you know, everyone handles it differently, um, mm -hmm. trying to be sensitive, the whole family thing tied in with work when it's right on your lap as we see somebody on the participating, you know, it's a, it's a whole different world that I'm first for me, it's an adjustment because I'm kind of a person who likes to be at work working and not at home. So sure. it's, it's an adjustment, but those people, I, I, I don't have kids at home anymore. So I think it's been a good thing to appreciate and see what they're going through. You bet. You bet. And, you know, think of this, and this is what we've had a lot of conversations on is kids are learning to learn online and what it means to not be face to face and they're digital natives. So they aren't unadept at this, but at the same time, when that's all there is, it's an interesting reaction from the younger people. Like, what do you mean we can't hang out and look at our phones, you know? And we're, <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to the parents dealing with that, but then to start to say, and your education is fully online. And then the parents are learning how to both cohabitate in the same space, trying to get work done, trying to parent, trying to be homeschool teachers, amidst the changing news and forecast every day. I mean, it's just, it's all at once for some people. And like you, my kids are older, so I have a breath of relief on that. Right. Different though, because I worry about them paying their rent. So it's a whole different <laughs> set of problems. Right. So Nancy, I know you've got a family lunch at 1230. So get something in with us. You always offer wisdom and hope and you work with a really special population. So let's hear from you. Uh, well, I just want to, you know, this is the first one I've been able to make because we've been, I feel like all I do is I'm on video from seven in the morning till about five at night. Um, the real big thing right now is to really remember self care. I think we're telling everybody this week, it's the first week we're really adjusting. Um, we're really trying to make sure that um, we're helping each other remember self-care. And I love seeing you on your treadmill, Sue, I, of course. Um, our population, we, we work with individuals with disabilities. Um, the cool thing about our population and the, and the group that we find jobs for is that they are already pretty great experts at technology. And I'm learning a ton from some of our temporary employees, um, and we're, you know, we're still putting people to work. It's kind of a, a shift in how we do things, but um, there's a lot going on, and I think the economy will continue to go. And just we're saying, take a beat, beat in the breath. You know, this is spring break. We got two weeks off. Enjoy it and figure out what to do. So thank you all. I'm going to go join my family for lunch, and I, I'm glad I finally got one, and I'll be on a couple more as the week goes on. Thanks, Sue. We'll look forward Good to, to it. See you, thank you. Jeff. Hey, yeah, Nancy. I'm excited to meet you, Brent. Yeah, yes, nice so someone's you. asking you something. Yes. Nancy, if you need um, a sign language interpreter for any of your people, let me know. I'm a little rusty, but I can make it through. Oh, so let's um, – uh, Sue we'll or, connect you. Uh, we'll connect yeah, we'll connect you because we do need that all the time. That's great. Thank you very much, Celestine. See you all. Bye, Christine. See, you never know what happens on these. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, that's good. Jess, you've got that one. Oh yeah, notes. Ab. She's got her notes <laughs> always ready. That girl. So, what else? What's facing? What are you facing? What's challenging? What's what are you hearing? We're at the end of the week. I know in Minnesota, we've got the announcement happening currently that everything but non-essentials is shut down. We're joining California. We're joining New York. Less that I'm always grateful we're here because we're progressive and seem to be very responsive, which I love. Christine, yeah. you came off mute. Oh, yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I got to swap to another call, but thanks everybody for sharing. Nice to virtually meet you and i plan to join the next one so stay awesome healthy. we'll see you more to come good luck thank you d please yeah my thought I, i'm not a business owner actually i'm retired now and in light of all this change and this change in parenting and told to stay home the the biggest problem i probably have is 
some of that isolationism, feeling lonely, Mm -hmm. remembering to reach out. I had a friend that just called and we talked for a half hour this morning on the phone, just on the phone. It's okay. (laughs) That's still good. (laughs) But, but there is that sense of isolation and loneliness that I need to remember to work on with some of the ideas that, that I've even heard here. Yeah, uh, because it's pretty easy to happen when you are a retired and don't have a natural um, contact base anymore. You don't have businesses to call or clients to reach or that kind of thing. So that if you have older friends, <laughs> um, that's something to think about for them. So I appreciate what you're saying. I have a friend who retired fortunately, because she's quite a business person at 40 years of age. So retired doesn't mean that to me. I have many like that. And what I would tell you is it might be worth your time, suggestion on my part, D, to make a list of all the people you haven't talked with for a while Uh and set a number for a day. You know, like I'm going to reach out to three of them every day because even one night when I was done working and my brain was stretched it was it I was fatigued and I thought wow and my whiteboard which is over here which I'll be happy to share if it's of use to any of you um, usually has client lists on it and such and I have all that on the computer but I'm visual so I need Uh to see what I have to focus on and I thought well of course I'm focusing on them but I looked at the list and I went I need to reach every one of them today And it just became this right now. So I started texting because I thought they're getting inundated with email. I didn't want to pick up the phone anymore. I didn't want to do that. But Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, a text is simple. And I did that and I cranked out 30 texts pretty fast. And I heard back from 20 of them within a day. Now that was a little overwhelming. So I don't recommend doing it all at once. (laughs) But to Brent's point, to what Nancy was saying and what I'm hearing every time we do one of these, I don't care if it's Jess and I on the phone with them or if there are 20 people or 30 people or 240 people, it doesn't matter to me. Everybody wants this connection right now and to know I'm seen, I'm heard, I can express Mm -hmm. my fears, I can celebrate something, you know, the basics of human interaction. So I would tell you, look in your in your corners of your brain of who haven't I talked to? And if you're not on Facebook, instead of letting the media take you, look at your list of friends and Mm -hmm. say, who haven't I had a one-on-one with and have a conversation through there? Because those are all people who want to be connected to you and we have the gift of time. Yep. Thank you. And I'll just dovetail on that too, just so you know, I mean, we all have, well, there's FaceTime and Skype. Zoom, which can allow for better group chats, is free, up to 40 minutes um, of a conversation. So we have a the different account that allows us to go for longer than 40 minutes or 15 or whatever it is. Um, but access those of us, like I am becoming very fluent on Zoom. And so I think that's another opportunity for us to reach out to my parents, <laughs> my mom, and other <laughs> Thank people. You. And and just, you know, offer, if you're not used to doing live conferencing, it really is, like a phone call is always nice, but I have to say seeing other people's faces in real time right now when we can't physically be with each other, it's not the same, but it is so important right now. Because as much as I'm an introvert, I'm a social introvert, and I'm beginning to miss it. And it's like day four. So I'm like, I was go to the say, gas the station just to get happy. gas. What about the rest of us? I know. <laughs> But yeah, I think it's, it is a good opportunity for us to say, hey, how can we help you that are, who are feeling isolated? We're used to now doing these virtual sessions. How can we share that with people who aren't as fluent with it? Well, and FaceTime and Netflix. If you don't know about this, you can watch a movie in a group on Netflix called Netflix Party. It's oh. on there. It's free. And what you do is you say, Friday night, seven o'clock, pop your popcorn, make your beverages. We're all going to watch you know, avatar and you throw it on. And if anyone has to run to the restroom, you hit pause, it pauses it for everyone. (laughs) So you literally, you can make your comments together, but there are some great things that, that companies are innovating 
to make this happen. We're doing a family game night tomorrow night, and I've been sharing this with everyone. Give me one minute while I grab it. Yes, this little game. This. Okay. this game is a blast. And we're going to do it on Zoom. Of course, you can play things like online poker and things like that that actually are a connected thing. But we are getting our kids together because one's been exposed. One is here with us. One is in another household. We're all going to make a beverage and snacks, right, in our own space. And then you draw a card, and this is how you play. So you say, best song to sing at the top of your lungs in order to embarrass your kids as you drop them off at junior high. And everybody, no matter their age, has to come up with a song, find it on their phone, and play a clip. But before you play the clip, you have to tell them why you picked the song. And we laugh so hysterically because we span several generations. <laughs> and the reasoning and the words and the how you thought up the song in the moment are hysterical. <laughs> but we'll have an hour and a half or two hours of sheer joy goofing around playing a game, you know, certainly we'll have some chit chat, but you can do, everybody has Uno. You can take your Uno game out and play, you know, you can do Yahtzee, you can do old school fun things and still be socially distant. You can do an online happy hour. I've been doing tons of these with business people and we're going to do one with a group of CEOs that I facilitate and we're going to call it the Platinum, po uh, Platinum Power Hour. And everybody's going to bring their glass of wine. We're going to do this. What are you facing this week? How can we help? And we said we're going to solve the world's problems. We'll digress into stupid memes and dumb jokes. But it's a pressure release. And it also can be serious if someone needs the help right in time. So ways to make this work, as Jessica said, there's a ton of platforms. Um, you can do a Google Hangout. You can do Blue Jeans. I just found out about that one. And most of them are free. So don't be afraid of technology, but let it unite you when you're feeling isolated because uh -huh. we all are. Yep. We all are. It's not just you, D. It's not about your age. <laughs> Good. Thank you. <laughs> I'm used to being with people 24 7. <laughs> it's kind of awesome to be home, truly. <laughs> I wanted to share something that's been helpful to me. I hope I can flip my camera around. This is um, a wee bit vulnerable because it's quite personal goals, but um, why not? Yeah, we'll just do this. Okay. So this is my kitchen. Okay. Um, and that is my whiteboard. Okay, go so, slowly and stand still because we can't quite yeah. get the image. And, um, you might have to soul. read it to us. So um, my husband, Hunter, and I have identified a goal and one of the things that was in the way of the goal. So, um, and then got clear on our words for our family. So it says at the top, our life is simple and sacred, healthy and creative. So that's, that's where we're headed. And the goal on the right is our house is paid in full. And then the thing that was in the way is how much money we've been spending on going out to eat. So uh -huh. I erased the numbers because those are pertinent to me. Um, but we've identified a budget for the food, how much is left to pay on the house. And then when we spend, we just put it over there. And then when we pay down, um, I put it over there and I wrote some Netflix party in blue jeans notes right there so because this is in the kitchen I see it every day um, so then I'm clear I just check in am I being simple or am I being complicated right now is this a sacred thing or am I turning this into like I don't know something that's not sacred <laughs> um, is this a healthy food choice am I being creative or am I being stuck um, so I'll ask those questions and then if for some reason I can't get unstuck, then I come back here. And I created this media blow up of 
the virus in the United States. It's not like it was in other places. It just wasn't as verbal here. Um, so that was really helpful. Hunter and I got to know what's essential. Um, y'all have heard of him yet. Um, I think Atomic Habits is his mm -hmm. book. Fabulous book. Um, yeah, every action you take is a vote for who you want to become. So mm -hmm. I wrote that at the bottom. So if I get distracted from simple, sacred, healthy, and creative, I can come back again. And then I wrote a few other things. What is precious? That's another question I've been asking. Um, stay in your heart. Trust, you'll know the way. Mm -hmm. The other one says, um, this one just came from a meditation, so it's actually mine. Um, the magic in this trust, the magic is trusting yourself. You are the magic. Mm. Um, and then life is a manifestation of where you place your energy. So it's really helpful to have the whiteboard. It keeps me on, on track. Um, asking specific questions and then noticing my actions. Like, um, I'm doing this. If I eat, you know, I don't know, I'm making something up. Three boxes of brownies. What, what vote is that for the person that mm -hmm. I want to become? Mm -hmm. That's, I didn't actually do that, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> In case you're worried. <laughs> um, that would be a massive stress response for me. <laughs> to eat three boxes. Not just you. Not just you. <laughs> uh, so if that's helpful to anyone, um, I wouldn't typically put a whiteboard in my kitchen. But it was just that, it became that important that I wanted to see it every day, many, many times a day. And that's been helpful, especially lately. Well, first of all, thank you for your vulnerability and for sharing that, because I think that's powerful. I also think it's powerful that you're opening up something that could be a wonderful teaching tool for everybody here and anyone who watches the video in subsequent weeks, because we'll be on there. And maybe they'll say, you're the perfect yoga teacher for me because you seem to walk your talk pretty well and put some things in place so that we all can both learn from what you do for a living, but also how you live your life. So that's what I'm taking away from that. And I appreciate that. Anybody else? Yeah, that was super helpful. Thank you so much for sharing because <clears throat> it really like, I love focusing on values. And I think it's been just so chaotic that you kind of just get wrapped up in doing what we do. And so I was already like, I need to go through the, our company core values and make, you know, like coming up with those questions, but then even my own personal core values. And I feel like sometimes there's a shift in the priorities of the values where um, if health is one of my values, but it hasn't been a top priority value, now it is. Like right now, now it is. And like, I have a core value of um, responsibility and kindness. So like, do those shift around? Like, what, what, what do I say? What do I believe are my priority core values? And how do I reprioritize those? But I love, love, love those questions that you're asking yourself. Like, is what I'm doing right now simple? Is what the, is my next choice? Am I keeping that sacred? Like, those are so, those were very powerful because I'm going to figure out a way to get those front and center. I've got actually a nice wall in front of me that's blank, looking for something to put on it. I'm feeling sticky notes or something. So thank you, Celestine. That was very powerful. And mm. I found you on Facebook and I messaged you in here. So yay. Good. <laughs> I'm good. Well, I would say if one of your core values is simple, a bunch of sticky notes is not right. There is that. <laughs> that would be really I don't know if you're visually overwhelming. And, yeah. Yes. Cause then they're like, pick me, focus on me, focus on me. I want to blah, 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 blah. So that's why I picked whiteboard black. Like it. <laughs> Just a thought if you're trying to go. No, I love board. that. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Brent D anything you want to add to that? No, um, but just kind of on a bright note, you know, while we're sitting here, the world will continue. Um, I just got a, 
picture of a signed agreement from a new client that just signed oh, today. Congratulations. Yay. You know, it's, uh, it, is, it is nice that at least some of the world will get back to normal eventually. So on that note, though, I do have to run and work on a couple of things related to it. So it was really <laughs> nice to meet do. all of you. Nice you to too, meet you. Matt. Join us Friend. again if it's helpful. Yeah, thanks, Sue. Good to see you. Yeah, take care. Bye. Take care. Take care. All right. Well, what else is on our minds today, ladies? We've got about 13 minutes and we can wrap up. I want to make sure you leave this thing energized, excited, ready to go. That's where I'm at. Yeah, me too. I'm energized. How about you, mm -hmm. Celestine? I feel good and I would like to make good on the, the yoga pose. <gasps> yes! Please. That y'all that you asked for. Um, so different poses can be used for creating different states of being and physical sensation. Um, so if y'all can give me a word of what you would like to experience, like grounding or heart opening or calming or something like that, that will help me pick a, a pose out of the lots, hundreds <laughs> that I know, then I can pick something specific that's pertinent to you for the state of being that you want. I would I love to centered. feel more grounded. Oh, what did you say, Sue? I said centered. Oh, that's centered. a good one. You said I grounded. Also, grounded. And I would say calming. Calming. Okay. Okay. Let's do, this one will be very easy. You don't need, a, you don't need a mat and you don't need certain clothes and you can do it anywhere that you are. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to stand all the way up. Uh, let's see if I can pull this out. Can you still hear me? Yep. Uh -huh. I have to turn you up now. I don't know if you can turn us up much more. We're pretty <laughs> turned up. <laughs> I, well, I can't hear you, so half deaf over here. Um, so this, this pose is called Tadasana. Let's see if I can turn you. Can you see me better? No, you can see more of me, right? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so Tadasana is grounding and it's centering, and the calming aspect is going to be the breath. Okay, so start breathing through your nose. Uh, that kind of breath is called ujjayi. Uh, ujjayi in Sanskrit means victory. So breathing through your nose creates a, um, not a flat line, but a calming way of being. Instead of having your way of being or your energy level go coffee, wine, coffee, wine. <laughs> it's more like this, and when you're calm, it's much easier to be grounded, centered, and less reactive, basically. So breathe in and out of your nose. So take a deep breath in. Exhale through your nose. So we'll do two more and set that up. The last breath, you want it to be audible to yourself. Inhale. Now keep breathing through your nose. The making it audible to yourself is so that you're conscious of I am breathing through my nose. And when you hear it, it triggers your brain in a, in a happy way of Yes, I am breathing through my nose. Yes, this is helping calm so that I have victory over fear. So Tadasana means mountain pose. Uh, so that's the energy quality that you're creating with this pose is mountains, so super strong. Um, so take your feet, your hip width distance apart. The best way to measure that is to put your two fists between your knees, and that's the minimum distance of your hip bones. 
not the like low on the sides part, <laughs> but the actual bones themselves. So just forget about the love part if it's present for you right now. So two fists between your knees and then push your feet down into the ground. And inner thighs squeeze towards each other, like upper inner thighs, like where your groin is. Um, since, well, in layman's terms, it's called mula bandha in yoga, otherwise known as squeeze your I've got to pee muscles. <laughs> really don't have another like, Pickles. Um, Pickles right that, now. <laughs> but that's what you want to do, right? Um, so squeeze your inner thighs together, squeeze mula banda, right? And then pull your belly button back towards your spine, right? So you pull your belly button back towards your spine. And then with your shoulder blades, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Not so much that you feel like you're really sticking your chest out, but just enough that your shoulder blades feel very strong. So you squeeze them in together. And then I'm gonna back up a little more so you can see me. Reach your hands to the ceiling. And you wanna spread out your fingers wide like this. Because there's nothing shrinking about a mountain, right? They are there and they're present and they're fully present. They're all the way there. So you want to be all the way there also. So push your feet into the ground, right? Squeeze your inner thighs together, mula bandha, your core lock, belly to your spine. That's your, um, that's your core lock, root lock, core lock. And then reach your fingers up to the ceiling. Breathe through your nose. So deep breath in, reach up. Exhale through your nose. Two more breaths. Last breath, reach up. Exhale. Now drop your hands down by your sides and pick um, one descriptive word of what you feel sensation wise in your body. Go ahead. Energized. Refreshed. Relaxed. Energized, refreshed, relaxed. How about you? I feel um, purpose. It's not a body sensation, but um, I feel excited to, to teach again. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for exceptional cueing, a great <laughs> gift to all of us on this call. And for those who will watch the video, you just can participate along because no one should miss out on that experience. That is what exceptional yoga teaching does is ground you. That was just five minutes of bliss and we will all have the benefit of seeing you again. Feel free to share that out to people, Celestine, because it was worthwhile and wonderful and it was an incredible gift to us. So thank you. Um, what did you call that, Mundala? Um, so that pose is Tadasana. No, I think but, I no, I that, but I'm going, my squeezing those particular muscles, that's my word of the day now. Mundala? <laughs> M Mula Banda. Mula Banda. That's the word we need to remember. Everybody should have a little Mula Banda happening today, <laughs> along with your Tadasana. I so. feel some <laughs> group texts happening in my future. <laughs> Thank you so much for everyone who was on the call, but for the four of you who made it through the whole hour, I am grateful. <laughs> we have a couple more next week. Please jump in if they can help. Thank so, yeah. you. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you.